Good morning to you, our esteemed viewers, and welcome to another interesting edition of the now streaming program reaching you from the Advent Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN TV. Now streaming is your favorite morning show where we discuss trending news and topics that affects us. I am your uncle, Smart Simon, and I have with me in the studio this morning, Sir Barrister Patrice Aquara. He is a former House of Representative candidate. Welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning, viewers. Viewers, we will be diving into the trending news for today, Friday, 5th of August, 2022. Do remember to call in to give your contribution via the number showing on your screen or send your comment via our various social media handle. And we are starting with the major headlines in the major Nigerian newspapers. And, and I'm taking punch, the punch first. And the headline there is Weakest Calm Condemns PDP's Anti-South Posture. Seek Redress. And the rider says... <coughs> PDP cannot have BOT, party chairman, others from North, Mwike's loyalist. Ours is a democratic party. We adhere to our constitution, says PDP spokesman. Lamido Bags Atiku, Mwike's reconciliation. Mwike's men demand equity and justice and uh, below the picture is the guy from Akwaibom, Akwaibom job seekers killer to die by hanging remember the story of this young man who was um, always attracting young beautiful girls uh, to pretending he's going to give them job and each time they come around him he will have carnal knowledge of them and then finally kill one of them. At first he admitted what he did. Later he started denying it. But uh, justice has caught, caught up with him. He has been sentenced to death by hanging. And I, I watched the video yesterday. He tried to run away. And I was wondering how he was going to run away from all the waters uh, and, and all of that. And eventually they pushed him into the Black Maria van, and then whisk him away. And that is that from the punch. Uh, I would like to take all these stories so that I will allow you to share your thought on this. I, I am now at The Nation. The Nation newspaper have the same headline with uh, the punch. 2023, PDP can win without Mwike. Atiku tells party board of trustee and the rider says buhari lost rivers yet won in 2015 2019 runners up race posers at meeting with candidate and that is that from the nations uh, then the nigerian tribune also is saying something similar it says atiku we can meet begin reconciliation talks and the writer says to set up committee to work out terms melae Bwala appointed as spokespersons for atiku and apc unveils lalong as presidential uh, campaign director general yeah before we take the last one uh, let me quickly uh, ask your take on the the major headlines today. Yes, sir. So what is your take on what PDP is saying through their candidate that without Mwike, we can win? Well, except the, I would want them, to, I, want to, I want to read where article was quoted by Martin because it doesn't sound like what a politician would say. Politicians don't make that kind of public statement. Do you get? Uh -huh. Because um, run up to any election, every politician would act like 
will act like those who are coming back from receiving Holy Communion. They, <laughs> <laughs> they go about it yeah. piously, beggingly, trying to be all inclusive. A seasoned politician cannot make that kind of statement. And Atiku, I don't think Atiku can make that kind of uh, statement. But if it is coming from all the major Nigerian newspapers, don't you th do you think that... I, uh, apart from apart from Nation, I don't think any other one captioned it like that. Yeah, the point, the, the point says, weakest camp condemns PDP, uh -huh. an anti-South posture. Good. The Nation say PDP can win without weakest. That's only Nation. And then Nigerian Tribune say, Atiku, weakest meets. Good begin reconciliation because, talks. Thank you. If there be, if there's any reconciliation talk, I don't think we can, um, I think we can make that kind of statement. Uh, so it's uh, the, the journalists, you know. Okay, uh, their way of selling their papers, yes, right? Yes, but yes. But what do you think, what, what do you, so, what do you think? What I think generally. Is it, is it that Wiki should just be, they should just forget about him or they should do everything possible to reconcile with him? I think they are overrating Wiki. Okay. Yeah, they are overrating him. Wiki's control is basically around River State. I am not sure he has the control of every River State person. Uh, he's but he has some friends, he, governors, he's who he has been. Whose people no longer. Or Tom uh, McKinde and, and, and what have you. This is the election. Uh, <laughs> it will be unprecedented <laughs> in the voting pattern. Okay. In the voting behavior of voters. Mm. I think it will be very unprecedented. Because if you look at it now, a lot of people, all these people you are mentioning, the average voter is disenchanted with them. The average voter go to villages. People are going through hell. And all these governors you are mentioning, yeah. they are not reaching, they are not reaching. There's nothing they are doing that is reaching the people to have that kind of impact. Do you understand? Uh, so this 2023 election will be, it's not you coming that you are commanding so, so, so number of voters. I don't think it's going to work. And somebody like Wiki, now he just realized that uh, PDP is, is, is pro, pro not and anti-South. I just look at him. That's just the way the average river man do, does his own. They are, you can imagine river states, just river states. You know, it's a very, it's not it's even a minority in terms of the big, the big... Uh, south, south? Big, yes, in terms of south, south. Because Okoa, the, the Delta people are not with them. Aquaibon people are not with them. Cross River, not with them. A dope plan, you know. So him just doing wiki rivers. I don't know why they are over overrating him because he has so much money, and that is say state money. Do you understand? I should have expected him to check the trains that had preceded this environment, this political environment, to know how he can leverage on the unity of the South uh. as a one formidable block and factor to demand something. But he was believing that with money, he can buy all the delegates. So he, 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 he did not approach it with the benefit of history. But they not see the way they behaved. <laughs> when, 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 they mat when, when, uh, uh, you can say it again. When <laughs> when it mattered most, they formed a group alliance. alliance. Some of them started stepping down for each other. <laughs> but Wiki felt with money, with the River State money, because that's not his personal money. He was just a minister, a, a, a junior minister during Jonathan. Uh, so these are not his money. It's state funds that he's using to throw around. So he felt that with money, you know, the usual PDP daily um, primaries. It's all about uh, the highest bidder. Uh, so. But it's no longer PDP alone because in the last election we have also seen uh, other parties. Yes, no, no, of course, like APC, fine. <laughs> yes, like APC, all of them, the usual political yeah. parties, primary approach. Yeah. Then uh, moving on to the Daily Trust, the newspaper you can trust. And the major headline there is uh, Osibanjo to military account for security expenditure. And uh, the kicker says, says security operative must be ahead of criminals.
canvases increase in local production of arms. And then finally, non-transparent military spending can create war economy. And that is coming from SPAD. Now, before you will go ahead and make a comment on what the vice president said, there is another headline there just below the Max head that says Lalong unveil as APC presidential campaign director general. Earlier round, we were told that um, Nasser El Rufai is going to be the uh, director general. But I don't know whether it is out of the agitation in the country. Uh, you have uh, a president, a presidential candidate, uh, Muslim. You have vice presidential candidate, Muslim. Now you have director general, Muslim. What, what, what is that? There was so much uh, outcry. But it's like they heard uh, what people are saying and decided to change to Lalong. Will Lalong make any difference? Well, I don't really, that's their own internal policy. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather we talk about Nigeria security than PC. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, you know. uh, go ahead and say what, uh, Osibanjo, what is your, yes, your thoughts? Yes, you know, I, 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 I listened to Osibanjo yesterday when he talked about, uh, you know, we being indigenous with, our, with our, the, the manufacturing of uh, military arsenal. Mm. That and if, I like that, that we have a man in Ogun State that yeah. is manufacturing. Yeah, that if, if we outsource it and buy from outside, you know, if we import all this military hardware and arsenal, it means that we are creating jobs elsewhere. Exactly. But if we do it, if we manufacture it in Nigeria, fabricate them in Nigeria, we will create job for local markets, you know, we'll, exactly. because our people will be employed. Mm. And. Um, Somebody else said something the other day, and I can key into it. You see, part of the failure of intelligence and intelligence gathering in this country is simply because <coughs> most of the people that are recruited in the intelligence community are less are not as intelligent as that work demands. Mm. Go to all of us are passed out from school, either secondary school, polytechnics, university. Mm. The first. When you go to almost of all this intelligence, it's from a people from a, a particular section of the country hmm. that are heading it and are directors and this. But when you go to when we were in school those days, these people used to come from maybe twenty last. They are not a, they were not part of the first twenty. Hmm. So how come in terms of working now they are the ones now heading the the, the worst of us or the the less of us in terms of intelligence are the one heading the intelligent. Uh, the intelligence community. So because intelligence is not just about gun, carrying gun up and down, you know. Like if you go to Israel, they have an elite core. The most intelligent part of them, when they recruit them in the army, the most intelligent of the recruits of the people of, the, of you know, of the people they are enlisting go to the intelligence community. The, the ones that with A+, plus, A++, plus plus, mm. these are the ones they recruit into Mossad. You go to CIA, is the best from, from their intelligence uh, you know, schools, uh, I've forgotten the academy they call it, is the best. But in Nigeria, it's not the best of us. It's just somebody from Yobe, Damaturu, all those things, people, maybe somebody uh, related to one person or the other. And that is why, yes. You can is, make the list of senators. <laughs> yeah, you make the thank you. They just, <laughs> so you cannot, you, you cannot be doing something in a very, in a, using primitive standards. And then you want to catch up with these criminals, with these terrorists that have gone, as in their own technology is, is, is not here. So I think beyond buying arsenal, you also have to have intelligent people working in intelligence mm. community. Mm. 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 That's, that is how other countries have leveraged on, on the best of them to secure the rest of them. Uh, what you're just saying now, I guess these are some of the strategy we really need to put in place as a country yes. in order to succeed in our fight against terrorism, banditry, uh, and, and, and what a few that we have in our hands. Because um, 
uh, from time to time, I try to watch some f some some movies, American movies, on how CIA, uh, uh, what they do, you know, how they succeed in their war against terrorism and all of that. And I notice that they don't wait until you are in their country, country. before they go after you. Yes. Wherever you are, if American government notice that you're going to constitute problems to their country, to the country yes. they will try track, to track you wherever and it is and, and they will you. send their best to neutralize you. Just recently, the, the man that took over from Osama. Osama bin Laden has been killed. He's not in the United States. At all. But wherever he was, they went after him and ensure that he is neutralized. Okay. And these are some of the things we should be doing in our country. We have uh, foreign elements everywhere oh. and they have infiltrated. And this is no longer uh, a kind of... Um, we, we, we are not sure whether they are the one or not, but these people are in our country. And from the way they deal with people, you know that these people are not Nigerians. And we learn that the money they have collected over one billion naira, they are using it to develop their country. Mm -hmm. In journalists hangout, I listened to Baba Jide and some of the journalists that were discussing, and they said these people are using the money they are taking from Nigeria to develop their own country. country. And the same country Nigeria is being, buying vehicles for. You see, you can, you can say it's SUVs, there. standard vehicles. Whereas, in a, I don't know whether they use SUV to fight uh, crimes anyway. I thought it would be Hilux and, and all that. But SUVs, eight of them, brand new, and it was donated in such a time as this, when Nigeria is facing a lot of problems in all sectors, from education to health sector to, to, to power sector. I don't know whether there is any sector that is functioning in any way, but then we are still donating, playing Big Brother <laughs> to, to other countries of the world. So that is that, and I think we should move on to the other trending news that we have. And the, the first one here is uh, talking about student union governments all over the nation decry ASU strike and the Sikh Ingege and Ad Ad Adamus sacking. Uh, I don't know whether this will make the difference. What is your thought on this? The student union government won Adamu and Ngige sacked because they have not done very well with regards to the strike that uh, has been going on for more than five months. What is your thought on this? Well, I remember those days when we were in school. <laughs> we had, we had uh, a matter in the court and uh, we approached Femi Falano you know, to come and defend us. He said, you unilag schools uh, last week. he called us he, he called us kilo by the schools kilo by the SUG. What is kilo by kilo by with you? Karazin, what do you have? Money, money. So what is the SUG? Is that kilo by the SUG? They're just interested in what you give them. How can they be talking of? How can they be wanting a mess messengers to resign or be sacked when the when the man who where the buck stops at his table? Uh -huh. Don't they know that this uh, gigi and uh, Adamu they are just they will not do anything. They, what would they do? They are just they messengers. So these are killed by the schools. The person who holds, if the president wants this strike to end. So that he approved the 1.4 billion for uh, buying of exo exotic cars uh, you know, Niger, in Niger. Niger. He can he can also do it. He the box stops at his table. Exactly. So why are these bemusious SUGs <laughs> telling us about uh, just the ministers are just messengers? Yeah, just messengers. The last time we met here, uh, we, we were told that um, the 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 Asu Esco said uh, they are yet to hear from the minister. And all that, and that was the opinion that day. That look, there is nothing minister can do okay. on this matter. Yes. That this is the time, Mr. President, need to call the ESCO of the ASU to a roundtable discussion. 
and negotiate with them. Simple. What do you want? Simple. Our children are at home. Okay, for example, if we need 10 billion naira, take 5 billion, go back to classroom and start doing something. We will source for the remaining money. At the right time, it will be handed over to you. That is it. It will solve the problem. But always sending me, uh, when I can do it, and I'm sending somebody, uh -huh. as, and he has no final authority no final to authority. do anything. And then students will now be saying they should <laughs> sack them. Sack them for what? Uh, they know what to do. SUG, if you want this thing to change, ensure that, uh, anyway, PVC, uh, they have stopped registration of PVC. But if you have your members who have their PVC, you know, use it, it you know, in 2023. You, initially, initially, they said if government does fail, or rather if government fails to resolve the ASU strike, uh. there will be no party primaries. They will not allow party primaries of APC and PDP to hold in Abuja. That's what they said. Uh. And I'm sure they would have done... They would it have, was just a lip service. They would have given them something. The leadership <laughs> would have given them something. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they kept quiet. They think we don't know. We, we, they think we have forgotten. <laughs> we have not forgotten. They must have given them something. If not, they would have mobilized their members to... And, uh, and they would have succeeded in they doing They would have, of course, now, because they would have had the sympathy of the people. Or they must have given them money and everybody now kept quiet. And now they are coming out to say they that... Uh, now. They are not just serious. They are not ready to return to, re to, yeah, return to their lecture rooms. For lectures. Otherwise, you, you shouldn't be staying at home doing nothing. Mm -hmm. This is the time to protest. You yes. have the right to, to protest. Protest. Yeah. protest whether you're protesting against the government or us. This is the time to to show, to express so your can grievance. can even go and block Asu, uh, 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 exit from Asu Rock. Just stay there and lie down there and say, government. Sleep there, cook sleep there. there. Cook there so that Buhari will not pass. Or block national assembly. Don't be um, don't be violent. Exactly. Or don't stay there. Exactly. Then let the army come and start shooting them. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Moving on to the uh, another headline here, and uh, this is a good news. Makinde inaugurates cassava factory. Uh, uh, so um, your, your thought on this, uh, the governor of your state has uh, done something which I consider very important, inaugurating. Uh, I don't know whether this stopped as inaugurating anyway, because Nigerians were good at inaugurating. What is your thought on this? That's the that's way to go. It's good for the government to be interested in you know, food, the food chain. Cassava has a lot of value uh. chain, you know, from... The cassava, the, even the, the, the bark, the cassava itself, you know, the, you can use it for ethanol, the water, when mm. you press that can be used for ethanol and fermented. You, you can use the, 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 you know, I remember during Jonathan, we had this cassava bread, and then also gari can come out of it. So there's a lot of value chain along the line of cassava processing. Mm. So when government picks interest, in agribusiness, you know, it ensures food security for the country. And when people are well fed, they will be able to think better. So kudos to the governor for your state for for that feat. Yeah, and um, other governors should learn from him and told that same line. We can't always be waiting for a location from the federal government. And then we're not looking inward. Every state in Nigeria, that is something God has deposited. Yes, that's why Peter B said that mm. when he comes on board, he will turn Nigeria into a production economy, not a consuming economy. Yeah. So this is in line with that production economy process. Uh, not long ago, I learned that uh, there was a proposal to remove power from the exclusive list where individuals and various states are allowed to be able to um, generate. Of course, even generate, pre pre presently there is a law that has liberalized power generation. Mm. Yes, with NEC regulating it. Yes. But the, that when there's a certain amount of uh, mega, uh, kilowatts uh, you can generate, and then 
distribute the national grid. It's there's a law. Well, it has to go to national grid first. No, it depends. You can still because I'm thinking you can still sell within that your community. Within your community, your locality, yes. You understand. So uh, that is the way to go. So that various individuals who are well to do can invest in that sector. St states. Mm -hmm. Uh, can invest in that sector, like Taraba that is having Mambila uh, Dam and all of that. These are the ways to go so that we will not continue to have this epileptic power problems that we have in Nigeria. Now moving on to another one, uh, First Bank headquarters in FCT sealed up by FCT High Court on Thursday, 4th of August. The headquarters of the first bank located at the Central Business District Abuja had been sealed up by the FCT High Court Enforcement Unit over failure to comply with garnished order. Ganishi. Okay, Ganishi order. A Ganishi order is one of the options open to a judgment creditor to enforce a judgment that has been made in his favor it is a common way of enforcing a judgment debt in solidly use and is solidly used to enforce monetary judgment against a debtor to recover money yes thank god where we have a lawyer in this in the studio what does it mean what is what what is actually happening here with uh, the issue of sealing uh, the premises of the first bank. Yes, there must have been a court order, you know, in favor of, in favor of um, an applicant, you know, in favor of somebody that first bank is owing, uh. and then enough time must have been given to first bank, and then how it works is can you see it so that the person will now approach the court and having approached the court. Mm must have cited to the court that First Bank has so-so-so properties or that First Bank has so-so-so amount in so-so-so account and that uh, can the court grant the order so that such amount or such properties can be attached, that is to say, can be used to liquidate the debts. Do you understand? Okay. So the court giving a garnishi or you come with, you, you the court will now you have made this application to the court and the court will now give that order for you to attach those either the account or the property yeah. and in this case the court made such an order and then um, first bank headquarters was sealed and if you notice in that place the you they took the generators the uh, air conditioners some cars which will now be sold and the value of it used to liquidate the debt okay. first bank is owing that person so it's it's a process that is available to anybody who is a judgment creditor that is to say you've gone to court alleging that somebody's owing you mm. or an organization is owing you and when you have proved your case the court will make such an order and give the debtor, the judgment debtor, opportunity to settle you, to liquidate that amount. Where you fail, uh, the person yeah. will now look for any of your properties and bring such um, property to the notice of the court that, court, give me an order so that, give me a garnishi order, that is to say, give me permission to use this property uh, to settle this debt. I see. Yes. Uh, but uh, First Bank is is a well-known financial institution yes. that shouldn't allow themselves to be, to be caught dragged. in this uh, type of uh, quagmire. Yeah. Uh, what is happening, I, I just don't know. All right, let's move on to another uh, trending news. Beyond proposal, states should just ban Okada. Um, I don't know what they mean. Why, why is this coming up now that states should ban Okada? But I, I guess this is coming as a result of uh, what the terrorist uh, bandits are doing now. Uh, 
Okada has become the instrument they use to be able to navigate freely in and around bushes, uh, to be able to move from one place to another and all of that. Now there is a cry and saying uh, there is need to ban Okada. Is that the way to go? Will it reduce the insurgency or terrorism we have or banditry we have in this country? You know, in most cases, um, these policy makers and uh, the intelligence community, mm. they may do some research and some studies, and they, they, they from time to time can come up with this kind of policy initiatives. Um, me and you, we may, not, we may not be privy to the kind of information available to them that may lead to their making this kind of decision. but. From observable fact, okay. uh. we notice that they, these people use this Okada for easy movement, easy access to the crime scene or crime person, or sorry, the, the targets, yeah. that, the, 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 the criminal target they, they have. You know, so the government may now weigh all these options. But then, because of the level of poverty that is in the country, you know, a lot of people feed their families by using Okada. Exactly. You know, just like places like Lagos that they've outrightly banned Okada use, usage around, along, uh, in, around the area. You may notice that criminality may now also increase because you have laid people off the economic uh, uh, bracket. They can no longer walk. And so if government wants to do such a thing, I think they should bring alternative alternatives to the, the people that are laying off from using that Okada they can give alternative or they should make it such a burden that every machine is numbered all the Okada they are using this you know, machine is numbered if a machine is not numbered and because machines because all these motorcycle they pass through our streets yeah if any of them are passing through the street and it's not well identif identified. The number, it must be given a number tied to the particulars of somebody in the data. Yes. So if it is not numbered and they are impounded, or rather any person using it should be arrested. Exactly. They should be proactive. You know, like I said earlier, intelligence did intelligent people. You know, it's not just about buying weapon and uh, it has to do with proactivity. Be proactive in you know, be just like in America. You know, this kind of phone we are using today, the intelligence community used it about 20 years ago. The kind of gadgets, the kind of scientific or uh, technological gadget they are using now makes them a step ahead of the society. By the time they are done with it, they will release it for us to use. That's the next, the, the next generation of, of phone or technological gadgets. Yeah. That is how our intelligence community should be a, a step ahead of these criminal Criminals. elements. Instead of being reactive. Exactly. But just being reactive because of the quality of people we have yeah. in that community. So, so some, intelli some, some stringent measures can just be put in place because if you just ban Okada outrightly, we have people who buy these parts from China and other countries of the world, bring it here, mm -hmm. sell it to mechanics, mechanics repair, and then those who are it's using it. a whole lot of economic so activity. You see, you see the chain of economic activities. So really once you say you're burning it, so the seller of the spare parts yes, yes. will be rendered useless. The importer. Mechanic. Mm -hmm. ahead. So starting from the, the, importer, the importer down to the, the retailer, China, yes. the, the person that will sell to the mechanic. Yes. And so all of these people Achille. will be out of business. Yes. So if there are stringent measures put in place, it will rather uh, help. And what I'm even thinking is the fact that in every community, you know each other. Yes. In my community now, if there are Okada people, they have association, they know themselves. So. And then this number you are talking about is tied to individuals mm -hmm. and all that. If you see anything that is strange, strange yes. somebody who is not part of you, you take necessary steps of arresting him 
and, and all. And so I was think, I'm thinking that these are the way to go. But outright banning these Okadas may not to be... To weigh heavily on the economy of, of the country. Of course, unless if there is alternative yes, yes. that will be given to uh, the people who are the operators of this. Now, uh, the next is on the issue of Sharia law. And um, this is uh, uh, coming from Sultan. And he said that... Uh, Sharia law not for non-Muslims, Sultan assures coppers. Uh, well, I, I, I am not sure how, through, how true this is. Because in Kano, there is Hizba police. And Hizba police have always uh, enforced Sharia law in Kano. We've seen where they are destroying... Uh, uh, alcohol and drink. Alcoholic and drink. drink. Not that, uh, not that uh, I'm encouraging al uh, alcohol. But the fact is that these people are there doing their business, but his bar will go seize and destroy. Which is a part of the enforcement of Sharia law. It's, it's enforcement of Sharia law. So if Sultan is saying that copper should not be afraid, that Sharia law is, is only for Muslims, how truth is this statement what, what is your take on this is this just a lip service or oh, he mean what he's saying <laughs> yeah you've said it all <laughs> but maybe he is talking about in terms of you know personal law as in personal the person you understand uh, there is um, sharia law as to the person do you understand uh, but from what um, the example you have given Sharia, they've been implementing Sharia law even against all persons, against all businesses. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I think uh, even when in this day, what they call blasphemy, blasphemy is not also supposed to be implemented against a non-Muslim. Non non so you find out that the Nigerian system operates a porous law enforcement procedure. Yeah, I shouldn't be guilty for what I don't it, know. Yes, non-state actors just take laws into their hands in the name of enforcing the law. Do you get it? Non-state actors take laws into their hands in the name of enforcing the law. That is to say, they don't even follow the procedure contained in the law. Let, let me tell you something you need to know about law. Nothing is illegal until it is written as illegal. Okay. It's only what the law says is a crime. It's a crime. It's only what the law... I can bring my, just like in Abuja here, sometimes we used to park along the road. Yes. Until the now said it's against the law. Uh. Parking now becomes illegal. Yes. Do you understand? In some designated places. But uh. now they've removed it, you can still park again. So, so long as there is there's no law criminalizing a certain action, uh. it is not, it's not a crime. But when the law now comes and says, don't do this, and then I write it inside a document called law or constitution or act what we call codification do you understand it becomes against you so when he's saying that he is stating what is correct but in, in terms of enforceability or implementation we have seen that it's not true we have seen a situation where in the south they call it revenues even from uh, these beer parlors mm -hmm. and what a few, and, and all the it, money pay will be paid the, into the federation account, and it's also tabulated there. Is, that, exactly, and they share part of it, and to then the they will share and give to the the Muslims and in they, the north, and they still collect, and they will still collect this money and use it, but then in their own place mm -hmm. they are destroying it. Is that no hypocrisy? That yeah, I think it has to do with the Nigerian system. I, it's the those who implement all these things, you know, the revenue mobilization, these people that, you know, share the revenue mobilization commission, that share the revenues of the government, they yeah. should have made it in such a manner that all the funding collected, <laughs> all the revenue collected from these activities you don't, you criminalize. Uh, Such money should not we don't go, go to, to you. you. you <laughs> when we share that one, we only share it to the other to part the of the country. Who, yes, who also be contributing to that revenue. Exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> you are robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's, that is true. 
that is true. Now, uh, moving on to an, another one, uh, Christian group to issue identification numbers to clerics. You know, the recent Hula Balu uh, during the uh, unveiling of the vice presidential candidate of Old Progressive Congress, uh, some some individuals uh, were there. The Lord Bishop of uh, Amado. <laughs> Of and the uh, they, they are there, and they can't come to say that, look, we don't know these people, and all of that. And it is obvious from the way they dressed, some of the wares they put on are not wares that is meant for public occasions like that. Um, but they put it on and went there with it. And even the vice presidential candidate recognized them and he said he had 30 bishops that are here and thanked them for their solidarity <laughs> and all of that. So it was really, really uh, a very bad scenario. And then some groups, Christian groups, is coming to say that, look, there is need to issue identification number to clerics. Is that the way to go or... Uh, I, I I guessed, uh, I think they, th this group is called Christian Association of Clergies in Nigeria. Okay, I don't even know that such a group exists. Maybe it's a recent development. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know whether yeah, that is have to go. And register. You have to <laughs> I will go and register. Yeah, register. <laughs> or uh, denominations mm. should be able to, in our denomination, we have measures put in place. You can't do things anyhow and get away with it. I don't know uh, whether this should be a denominational thing or there is a body somewhere that should regulate this. What, what is your take on this? Looking at the bastardization that has taken place recently, should this be the way to go? Well, I, my opinion about religious things is that um, we have reduced religion and religiosity to the level that people hold it to scorn in this country. You know, so whatever you see is whatever is what you get, <laughs> you know. So for people and then also you also notice that people are entitled to what they want to do. Just like APC went and recruited priests in quotes. Uh -huh. So you cannot stop anybody from doing a criminal act as far as i'm concerned it's impersonate it's impersonation they they impersonated uh, who they are not do you get yeah uh, so it's uh, it's neither here nor there hmm. all right thank you uh, we're moving on to the insecurity you know you can't come to this studio and not talk about insecurity because that is the situation we are in today in our country. Uh, so I'm going to take some insecurity headlines on insecurity right now, and then we, we discuss them. Um, kidnapped Kaduna Rector, lady, regain freedom. Go government adopt Anambra cleric. Uh, Kasuna terrorist invade community, kill farmers, adopt women. Uh, I want to read that that story. A farmer, Abdul Rashid Mana, has been killed after suspected terrorist attack down Sunni village in Batagawara, local government area of um, Kasuna State. Two women were also injured in the attack, while an unspecified number of people who were said to be women were reportedly adopted by the hoodlums. Resident claimed that the bandits struck in the morning, adding that three people were killed. Mana was reportedly attacked after he arrived in the village from Kasuna town. So says that the terrorist struck in the neighboring community of Kwarin, Soto, and Kore three days ago, where they killed two people and kidnapped eight others. Yeah, so your take on this. Uh, the issue of insecurity <coughs> in our country. Honestly, it's been it's been lingering for a long time now, mm. and especially in the rural north, the level of um, killings recorded it's alarming to the extent that people 
Children don't go to school again. You know, fam a lot of families have been decimated. Things are no longer at ease. Uh, even in Abuja, even our in Abuja, schools it's are now, it's closed now, it's abruptly. Through. Yes. <laughs> you know, so I wonder, I take a look back at <coughs> what used to happen. The whole media outrage against Jonathan, both the Lagos press, the Western press, all of them. They, they, today, the difference is they're just reporting it. But during the times of Jonathan, they it were a criticism. It was they were, they were, not, they were not just reporting it; they were making heavy weather out of it. Exactly, playing, making it look as if he was incompetent. And I was always wondering because it dawned on me then that, as far as I was concerned, then I knew that the insecurity in the north were just man-made, just created exactly. for the purpose of removing him from office. Exactly, I knew that was why. Exactly. Then I supported him because. You cannot benefit from your own criminality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You cannot plan to injure somebody. And when you now injure the person, you now say, why didn't you defend yourself? And I wondered how gullible the press were. You know, the Western, like the other one, say his name is Omashe, was writing an obituary. You know, these, you know, these people... And they, then they came against him. Yeah, serious, yeah, yeah, and then he said, he said they, 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 they. <laughs> Look at your fellow human being. How can you write obituary? How can you use can the word obituary? obituary on your fellow human being? And when they now attack you, they say, which kind of life do you have that should be protected better than his own? You see, the press, the media, they are now like... Just kill over the press. Just what do you what do you have to offer me? Brown envelope. Yeah, what do journalist. you have to offer me? And I'll write whatever you want to write. I'm I'm sure that they are not putting the president under pressure in such not a manner. At all. In such a manner. So they just come. So they just come discussing. They just report it. They are not using it as a strong advocacy in a manner that he should have been put under mm -hmm. pressure. At this time. If it were Jonathan that bought ah, those vehicles ah. to Cameroon or Togo here, yeah. you, you yeah. could imagine the that's kind That's why I expect people like Wiki. That's why Wiki, when I look at him, I, I just, I just look at him and say, they are doing is, nothing. As far as I'm concerned, Wiki is just like an Aguero. Sorry, he's a lawyer. He's sharing the same career with me. But he's just an Aguero. Because he should have been the way she team at them. Those days when Jonathan was there, and, the uh, way they were fighting, la, 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 the la, way they were, they they were attacking. attacking, you know, this guy, they galvanized themselves. That's the way Wiki should have galvanized his southern governor's brothers in the PDP, in the so-called opposition party called PDP, to put this man under pressure because they have the immunity. When those who are not with immunity attack the president, he arrests them. He he will carry EFCC against them. But they are without immunity. They are with immunity. They should have really been. Was like, it perhaps because PDP did not recognize the effort of Mwike? That is why he has kept quiet. But because I know quite too well, nothing to recognize he has about been his talking, effort. He, has, he has been talking. He's just talking. Like, he's just talking like a tout. First, I'm, with due respect to his office as a governor, he's just talking in an uncoordinated manner. Sorry to use that for the governor of Rivers people. I respect Rivers people. They are my neighbors from where we come from. But their governor just opens his mouth anyhow, says things anyhow. There's no coordination. There is no organized approach to his opposition. That's why they can just take him for granted in that party, hmm. as far as I'm concerned. So shouldn't be crying loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on, still on the issue of insecurity, police bounty. Police place bounty on Delta Brothers wanted for terrorism. 2023 elections I will hold will hold peacefully, and uh, this is an assurance from uh, yes, Nigerian Security um, Advisor. Advisor. Security Advisor. He assures Nigerians that it will hold peacefully. I don't know what he meant. He is it that he, the situation is going to change? No, no. Why? He, what if you read it down? What he meant is, is he said that the level of preparedness and technological, um, in technological hardware, like all these beavers hmm. that uh, INEC is bringing about, will forestall rigging, will forestall 
some of all these sharp practices that lead to violence. People ballot snatching, yeah. uh, ballot carry. If you carry ballot these days, you just carry it for nothing. It's, it's not <laughs> because of the no, numbers has been taken. Taking as people are voting, <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. carry. If you want so, to carry ballot, but carry. carry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he's trying to say that this particular one, the areas that could bring conflict or violence had been greatly limited by the technological innovations. So, and it's, re it's refreshing. It's peace. When I read it, I felt refreshed mm. that, that the future we are looking at is uh, gradually. We're, yes, we're, 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 we're getting there. Yes. Uh, now, there is, there is something very important here that happened in Benue, which I want us to discuss. Uh, or turn to purchase AK-47 and others for security outfit. Was it yesterday now that he launched the community volunteer, volunteer, security volunteer. guards? Yes. Uh, he launched that. You know, we have been we have been shouting. It is time for state police. It is time for community police. We have to do this by ourselves and all that. But uh, police remain in. Uh, exclusive list of the federal government, uh, but then well, it's not exclusive list. It's, it's not it's it, exclusive. It, yeah, it's not exclusive. So how comes that because, the state are not able to have their own state because police? Because the police act, the police commission, mm. and the security outfit. If the governor, the governors, and the president are joint members, okay, you understand? Fine. It's just that you have to apply. For you to bear arms, you have to apply. It's centralized. The IG, the, the president, IG authorizes. You understand? It's, that's a different thing. But also, the constitution confers on the governors the position of the chief security officer oh, of yes. each state. state. I've conversed it here that pursuant to that section authorizing governors to be the security uh, chief, chief security officers, their state legislatures can make laws for to activate to activate the function you understand yeah. of security personnel apparatus and services in their states pursuant to that governor can make a proclamation that as the chief security officer of the of this state derived from the powers given to me by the constitution I'm authorizing the legislature. I'm bringing a bill to the state assembly to make such laws to enable me effectively secure the state. Do you understand? Okay. So they can do it. I've said this several times. Is so when you now do it now also in terms of bearing arms, in terms of liberalization to bear arms, this this the the speakers of the various state assemblies can come up with a constitutional amendment bill. Okay. You understand because you know the constitution we, we operate a rigid constitution that requires the input of all the state assemblies yes you understand and all the people from this from all the people representing us both at the nation at the international assembly either senate or federal house, all of them come from states exactly so tell me why can't they amend the constitution in such a manner that the state governors, pursuant to that bill, those bill, the, the bill they made for the the, the 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 bill they sent to their state assemblies to make law for them to secure their states. You understand? Why can't they come up with a constitutional amendment bill to ensure that the purchase of arms can be liberalized in such a manner that the state governors can also have the same powers? as the president mm. to issue arms to applicants that is you know individuals who are applying do you understand okay so it's actually the governors that don't have the political will to do oh, the lack of intelligence you know we, we 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 elect people who are not really that intelligent we elect people go and check the people we're electing although i agree that most of them are but if you elect if you go to the united states where we borrowed most of all these things or go to, uh, you, you, or you go to UK. Most of the people in the in the public service, uh. as politicians, are either lawyers or accomplished businessmen, or or you know like you say Labour Party. 
Uh, and there are certain universities yes, you go to. You go to. You go to or there are certain you say Labour Party, okay, this person he, he's representing this community, he must be something somebody but uh, yeah, people just make money through mm. being work, working as civil servants or in the custom, make money, steal money and they now come and use it to win <laughs> election. That's what we have here. So uh, there is no there is no calibrated we don't there's no for intelligent yeah, there's, people. Yeah, there's no calibrated training or equipment of the personalities that we use as our public officers in this place, mm. as politicians. They are not, they are just, half, they are just in there for money. If they can bring a bill, somebody can just give them money and they will just, they will <laughs> vote. Uh, all right, let's take this one as we, we close this discussion. Uh, Atiku appoint Dino Mela uh, uh, Boala as spokesperson. I uh, think it's only Boala that I saw there. <laughs> Dino Mela, maybe he appointed him to give us some comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just balancing the whole thing. But this Boala, is he not the same guy that was in, in APC? In APC? Uh, he left, he resigned when APC nominated Muslim Muslim ticket. Okay. So he just resigned. Uh, and immediately, PDP decided to use the PDP. opportunity. He was in PDP before. He left okay, PDP. he left PDP for no, APC. He has so, yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, back uh, to his base. He was capitated up yes, and down. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's see the difference they will make uh, as the campaign will start soon. And let's mm. see what they will bring on board. Mm -hmm. uh, th that is that. Okay, so that is it. Uh, we, we, we are grateful to you. Uh, maybe perhaps before we appreciate you, maybe you can give us your last word. Uh, my, this last, program. my last word is that if you want this country to make progress, you should be obedient. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be useful. Of course, the Bible says if you are willing and obedient, obedient, you will eat the fruit, the fruit of, of the land. land. So I am obedient. You're obedient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are grateful to Sir Barrister Patrice Aquara, uh, a former candidate of uh, House of Representatives. Thank you so much for your time and for Thank coming you. to share your thoughts on the issues bordering us in our country. Uh, viewers, thank you for allowing us a little of your day. Uh, for those who have registered, ensure that you get your PVC. Uh, by October, the PVCs will be available for people to go and uh, pick. Ensure that you collect your PVC so that uh, you can use it during uh, election. Uh, get involved in the decisions that will affect us as a nation in the coming elections by voting. Please ensure that you vote because this time around, your vote will count. You understand. Remember, you have the power to decide Nigeria's progress or failure with your vote. And also remember, God is our protector and therefore put your trust in him. To will come your way again, same time, same station. Um, that will be on Monday. I am Smart Simon. Do have a wonderful weekend.